welcome to Cine Monica. Hello everyone, welcome back. For this video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that I've watched in the last like three months. The truth is that I kind of miss talking about what I watch each month. I used to do those videos where at the end of each month I would tell you everything that I watched in that month, but I kind of stopped. I just felt really bad if I didn't watch enough things in a month. So I was like, I don't wanna make a whole video about the five things I watched. So here is a compromise. Before we start, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Notion which is an amazing tool that helps you organize your entire life. I love scheduling things, having everything organized because if I don't put it on a note, there's no way my brain can remember what to do each day. I will talk about it more in depth in a little bit. So for now, let's just start with the best movies and TV shows that I've watched this month. I'll get into the worst ones a little bit later. Let's start positive. The first movie I wanna talk about is a movie that I've already talked about in my videos, in my Instagram, in my Twitter. Basically, every single chance I get, I talk about this movie. <laughs> and it is Belle, the new Mamoru Osoda anime movie. And wait, actually, <laughs> I just received this gorgeous steelbook from G Kids. Just look at it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love this art right here. Bell is an anime movie that is directed by Mamoru Osoda, which is one of the greatest anime directors right now. It's about a girl named Susu. She is very, very shy, but she enters this online world called You. And in this world, she becomes Bell, a gorgeous pink haired girl who can sing her heart out and captivate the hearts of millions. There's a mysterious beast though in this world that is very misunderstood, but Bell becomes intrigued by him. And she wants to help him and understand him and if you haven't noticed yet it is based on beauty and the beast i mean it's literally called Belle. the animation in this movie is gorgeous i absolutely loved it Belle's character design is absolutely gorgeous and also the music in it is incredible i mean Belle could be a best-selling artist if she wanted to honestly gorgeous film continuing with the best movies that i've watched lately the next one is a movie that was nominated for the oscars and it's drive my car i actually don't know if i've talked about it on my channel i don't remember if i did did I? But if I didn't, um, I was completely destroyed by this movie. It's about a guy who is a playwright and he's assigned this girl who is a driver to drive him to and from rehearsals and all that stuff. The two of them seem very different, but they bond over things that they have gone through in their lives. This movie deals a lot with grief, which to be completely honest, if I had known, I wouldn't have watched it because I watched it like around March or April and some of you guys know that my dad passed away in February so um this movie just hit me hit me really hard and god I'm gonna cry anyways I cried when I watched it a lot like it really wrecked me but I want to let you guys know that it wasn't in a bad way I felt extremely moved and touched by it and the message that I got from this movie is that you have to keep on living your life. You can be sad, you can be upset, but ultimately there's nothing else for you to do than to keep living your life. And that's literally all you can do, just keep on living your life. It might seem like super simple advice and like very, I guess, obvious. Sometimes it's just hard to remember, especially in the tough times. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you do, even if you're going through grief or something like that. Of course, if you're not ready, don't watch it, but it really did comfort me, so. Okay, let's take a little bit of a break and talk about Notion. Notion is an extremely useful app that you can use to literally organize everything in your life in just one app. I have a lot going on and I need help. In my notes, I write a lot of like ideas. Before I used to write them on the notes app on my phone, but with Notion, I can just have everything in one single app because if I write a note down, I can have it right there next to my calendar, next to my schedule. It really allows me to use my notes more and be actually usable in my life instead of just like lost notes that sometimes I write and then I forget about them. I don't know where I put them. I can have a bunch of to-do lists, for example, a to-do list for my work, a to-do list for YouTube, and the best part is that everything is customizable everything is drag and drop so you can really play with it and put everything where you feel more comfortable it's like organizing your organization tool um, the ultimate organization it has really helped me 
stay on track with everything that I want to do. So thank you so much Notion for sponsoring this video and don't forget to check out Notion. I'm going to leave the link in the description for you to download the app. Have fun organizing your life. Moving on to After Yang, which is directed by Coconada, who directed Columbus, which is an amazing movie um, that I recommend as well. But After Yang is a movie set in, you could say, like a futuristic reality. This family adopted a little girl from China and they wanted her to feel closer to her roots, to her culture. They got this robot to be kind of like her older brother so he can teach her Chinese, Chinese culture, and just be there for her while she grows up in a family that doesn't doesn't really look like her. This is an extremely minimalistic, quiet, simple film. And I absolutely love it. Some people might find this style a bit slow paced or boring. This movie is just very tender and quiet, just so beautiful both visually and thematically. Again, it kind of deals with grief in a different way. This movie really touches on memories and memories of people once they're gone. When someone is gone, all that is left of them is the memories from the people that they knew. It really reminded me of the book Never Let Me Go, which I love. Um, it has that sci-fi vibe to it. It's kind of like a very subtle sci-fi, but it feels really, really human. The next movie is called Everything Everywhere All at Once, which I'm sure you guys have heard about already or have gone to the movies to watch it already because everyone's talking about it and honestly for a really good reason it was overwhelming chaotic fast-paced ridiculous goofy deep unique emotional so many times during this movie i wanted to cry but i was just too busy laughing such a great juxtaposition of just goofy silliness and the most random things you could imagine but that have really deep meaning and that truly made me want to cry i mean i did cry by the end of it it was super existential but also it was wrapped up in all of these action sequences i honestly haven't had this much fun watching a movie in a long time it was a crazy theater experience the next movie i'm going to talk about is called the unbearable weight of massive talent and it stars Nicolas Cage, who plays Nicolas Cage. Um, I was invited to a screening of this movie. To be honest, I wasn't really planning on watching it. It just looked kind of dumb, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not like the biggest Nicolas Cage fan. I'm not running to see everything that he's in. And you know what? I stand corrected. This movie was great. <laughs> Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage, who is an actor. He is kind of like very self-involved. He only wants to talk about himself. So this millionaire, Pedro Pascal, invites him to his mansion because he is the biggest Nicolas Cage fan in the world. So Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal bond over their love for Nicolas Cage. The chemistry between Nick Cage and Pedro Pascal was off the freaking charts. Pedro Pascal's character is the absolute cutest. Mind you, this is a grown man. His character and his love for Nicolas Cage was just so cute. Um, their interactions were really funny. The dialogue was really funny. If you just want a silly movie that you can have a good time with, that you can go watch with the fans, Family. This is it. I mean, it might be kind of stupid, but it was a good kind of stupid. Like, it was really funny. It was really fun. The next movie I'm gonna talk about is The Batman. Okay, that one I'm pretty sure 99% of the population has watched it. Robert Pattinson is a great Batman. I never once doubted him because if he can play a vampire, he can play a bat. This Batman movie was, it was very dark, especially at the beginning. It kind of reminded me of the Zodiac movie. It kind of felt like one of those psychological thriller movies or like detective movies, which I guess, I mean, it kind of is. I don't know what I'm saying. This Batman movie was really good. It definitely succeeded like all expectations. I love to think about the fact that Bruce Wayne listens to Nirvana while he puts on his like dark eye makeup. It's just really funny to me. <laughs> the Batman was very engaging. Kind of didn't feel that long because it was really entertaining. Great performances. Honestly, I'm very excited for this new era of Batman. Yeah, very proud of you, Rob Pattinson. You'll always be my favorite vampire slash bat. The next movie I want to talk about is The Worst Person in the World which I think it came out last year, but I'm just now watching it. And honestly, I regret waiting so long because it truly was a movie that spoke to my soul. <laughs> it's about this woman who doesn't really have her life figured out. We see her at the beginning changing careers a bunch of times and ultimately throughout the movie coming to terms to what it is that she wants. 
but still feeling kind of lost in the process. I think it's a very relatable movie for people like myself who are in our 20s and we... It seems like we have stuff figured out, but we don't. Honestly, I'm not sure if people can ever really figure things out 100%. And that's what this movie made me feel. No one really knows what they're doing. We're just trying our best here. The next movie I'm gonna talk about is The Northman, which I just watched in theaters. Um, it's Robert Eggers' new movie. I must say, I didn't really know much about it before I watched it and it really took me by surprise. I was not expecting so many manly growls and screams, revenge and blood and <laughs> it was very gory actually. But honestly, it was a really good movie. It's about this guy, this Viking, who wants revenge. He wants to avenge his father, rescue his mother and kill his enemy. So yeah, he does that. <laughs> This is his life's purpose. This movie is very exciting. It always has you at the end of your seat because you don't know what this guy will do next. There's a lot of action. Nicole Kidman was great. There's a monologue that she does that is very, very powerful. Anya Taylor-Joy was also great. She's always good. And everything that she does, she is perfect. Just know that you will see a lot of blood, body parts, and things like that. Lots of violence, just a warning. But overall, it was very good and very exciting. Okay, so to end the best category, I want to talk about an anime that I'm currently watching, and it's Spy Family. It is the absolute most fun anime that I've watched lately. It's about this guy who is a spy and he has to do this mission where he has to pretend to have a wife and a kid. So he adopts this little girl, but he doesn't know that she can read minds. He gets this woman to play his wife, but he doesn't know that she's an assassin and she doesn't know that he's a spy. It's just so funny. I love their dynamic. It's super cute and fun. Yeah, give it a shot. By the way, guys, I just saw it twice in concert last weekend. And it was incredible. Okay, going back to the movies that I watched. All right, moving on to the worst movies that I watched lately. The first movie I want to talk about is House of Gucci. I know this movie came out last year, but I still hadn't watched it. And honestly, I could have lived without having to watch it. It just wasn't entertaining. I don't even know how long it is, but it just felt super long because nothing was interesting. The story was very bland. I didn't particularly like any of the performances. Lady Gaga's was good, but Jared Leto, what was that? I don't know. I just didn't really care for it. It was very forgettable, uninteresting, could have been more exciting. It's about an actual, a little murder. It just felt very boring and bland and I'm sorry. The next movie I'm gonna talk about is Bubble, which is an anime movie that came out on Netflix. Bubble is set in this post-apocalyptic world where this deadly bubble <laughs> destroyed everything. And I was very excited about it because the trailers looked beautiful, the animation looked very enticing, very colorful, very fun. It just seemed like it was gonna be a beautiful movie, full of adventure, and it was honestly just very underwhelming. I didn't really care for any of the characters. The plot was super rushed, and therefore it was just very confusing. I'm thinking that maybe this could have been a series because, like I said, it was just very rushed. As a whole, I don't think it worked. The next movie is Cyrano, which stars Peter Dinklage, directed by Joe Wright, which I was very excited about. So Cyrano is about this guy who is in love with this girl, who is his friend. He is a great poet, he writes beautifully, but the girl is in love with another guy. So Cyrano helps him write these fake letters to her so she can fall in love with this guy. It's a musical, it's a period piece. Honestly, it was like right up my alley. I was very excited to watch it, but sadly, <laughs> I must say, it's a sweet movie, very forgettable. The songs were not very good at all. Like, I cannot remember a single song in that movie. Peter Dinklage, of course, is great. He's a great actor, but I mean, he was just not enough to carry the film. I have a feeling that this movie could have worked better if it wasn't a musical, because like I said, the songs were just underwhelming. It was a pretty boring movie, to be honest. I'm very sad, because I love Joe Wright. I love his movies. I love period pieces like that. It was a love story. Um, 
all four romantic period pieces. Yeah, just pretty disappointing. Next is Last Night in Soho. Last Night in Soho is about this girl who wants to be a fashion designer. She moves into this apartment that is owned by this old lady. There she starts having these dreams that are very vivid where she enters the 1960s and she becomes this beautiful girl who is a performer. But then she really starts uncovering this very disturbing thing. <laughs> I don't want to spoil. Last Night in Soho was not completely bad. I was entertained by it. I won't lie. I really wanted to know what was going to happen next. But then it just became a little bit repetitive. I I did think it was a fun watch. Um, I wasn't a fan of the ending at all. Yeah, it was just a movie that kind of came and went for me, which is a shame because I really like Edgar Wright's movies. I think they're very fun and very unique. And this one was pretty unique as well. But like I said, it kind of had no substance. It was just all surface level to me. I do relate, however, to wanting to be Anya Taylor-Joy. So now let's move on to the category that I like to call meh because yeah it's pretty self-explanatory they were pretty meh for this category the first one i want to talk about is the dropout which is a tv show that is on hulu and it's about elizabeth holmes who is the quote-unquote inventor she claimed to have invented this machine that could analyze a patient just by a drop of blood she is of course very infamous there's been documentaries she's been all over the news and so hulu decided to make a tv show about her starring amanda seyfried the show to me had a lot of like ups and downs while i do think elizabeth's story is very interesting the fact that she fooled so many people just by literally lying is incredible <laughs> in a bad way and the fact that there's a documentary is great but i don't think that a eight episode series was necessary to tell this story it's not that long and therefore this tv show suffered it was pretty boring at some points it went like way too deep into her past and her personal life which i enjoy it was just not that interesting and they just tried to stretch it out as much as possible i think maybe a six episode show would have sufficed or a movie just a two-hour movie which brings me to the next tv show i want to talk about in the meh category and it's the girl from plainville which is also from hulu which also suffers from the same thing that i just said it's a very famous case it was all over the news when it happened and of course like i said hulu decided to do a tv show an eight episode tv show of this case which wasn't necessary although it was very interesting and Elle Fanning is an amazing actress she did a great job I was honestly kind of bored and yeah I just think these Hulu TV shows all suffer from the same thing and the last movie I'm gonna talk about in the meh category is Fresh Fresh is a movie a Hulu movie wow I'm really throwing Hulu under the bus here but not my intention I'm just they have a lot of good things too but anyways, Fresh is a movie starring Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones and it's about this guy and this girl who meet and turns out that the guy is actually a cannibal. This is not a spoiler because it's very obvious from the trailer and everything that that's what's happening. I wouldn't say it's like the worst movie I've seen because it was actually pretty interesting. I was very hooked with the story and what was gonna happen and all that. I do think Sebastian Stan is a great villain but i was super disappointed with the ending i feel like they just didn't really know how to end the movie so that really like docked points for me but i do think it's worth watching i wouldn't say like it's a bad movie or anything it's just meh that's why it's in the meh category and that's it those are the best and worst and meh movies and tv shows that i've seen lately let me know if you've seen any of the movies and tv shows that i mentioned and also please let me know what are some of the things that you've been watching that you really liked or you maybe didn't really like and also don't forget to check out notion and download it i'm gonna leave the link in the description it's a great organizational tool that could really help you stay organized in your daily life it has really really helped me so yeah don't forget to check it out i hope that you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys on the next one bye